As the COVID-19 pandemic has pushed people to isolate in their homes, there's still an urgent need for blood donations. And according to the American Red Cross, thousands of blood drives, which are often held in schools and community centers, have been canceled across the country. Carolee McGrath sat down with Kelly Eisner, the communications director for blood services for the American Red Cross, to learn more about the need and how people can help. Right now, you know, the American Red Cross has seen a surge of donors who have come out and really answered the call for blood. Um, and right now we do, we are able to meet immediate hospital patient needs. But, you know, as all the health officials are telling us, this is going to be a, an extended concern. Um, so we are asking people to make appointments. If you can't get an appointment this week, that's okay. But if you can get one for next week or a couple weeks from now, to make those appointments and keep them and really just keep the blood supply in the in the back of your mind if it's at all possible. So when you make that appointment, where are people going and how have the procedures changed as far as, you know, uh, those who are working there uh, with the public? Sure. So um, all our appointments right now, we're filtering everything through redcrossblood.org. Um, the reason for that is that there's been a lot of changes just with, you know, as sites shut down and as buildings are being told that they can't have public um, at their site, we have been adding appointments to our Red Cross locations just to sort of make those appointments available. When you get to a Red Cross blood drive, what you'll see before you're even allowed into the room where the donation is happening, we're going to be taking your temperature and asking you to use sanitizer for the first time. Um, if you're, assuming you can pass that temperature threshold, you can be allowed into the donor room, again, there's sanitizer all over the place. I encourage you, you know, it's free, it's there for your use, so use it. Um, and, you know, this week, actually, our you'll see our staff wearing masks, which um, was something that, you know, we had to weigh the CDC. They're wearing basic face masks, the CDC, I know, was um, recommending healthy people don't wear masks. But in this case, you know, we just want to make sure that we have that proper social distancing um, between our staff and donors and that both sides are as safe as they possibly can be. The other thing that's um, really different right now is when you come inside, you'll see social distancing between donors at every point. So, you know, in that little waiting area where you're waiting to be called into the health history, um, there's six feet between chairs. Once you get into the health history uh, or once you get through health history um, and brought to the bed itself, um, it, those beds themselves are being spaced out six feet. And then again, after your donation in the refreshment area, the chairs are six feet apart. Our staff is wiping down those surfaces between every donor, um, changing their gloves as frequently as they can. It's always, they always change gloves between donors, but this is, you know, in addition to that, um, again, sanitizer everywhere. Tell me a little bit about how many uh, blood drives you typically have, the places that you have them at, um, and that how many have been canceled in the last uh, few weeks? Sure. So we normally have, um, you know, on a, any given day, you'll have, we'll have between eight and 15 blood drives running throughout Massachusetts. Um, we're seeing those numbers decline, but at the same time, we're trying to add appointments to the blood drives that are on the calendar. Uh, the reason for that is 80% of the blood drives run by the Red Cross are at the kinds of sites we've been hearing about, you know, schools and businesses that have been told to close down. Um, so, you know, it's as they cancel, we're doing our best to find additional sites. We do have to, the Red Cross does generally have to collect 273 units of blood every day in Massachusetts just to keep up with hospital patient needs. And again, right now, we're able to stay on that cadence, but again, the need is going to be, is going to continue as the pool of eligible donors shrinks as well. So nationwide, I know that there has been a, a urgent call for blood donations as well. Like thousands of um, blood drives have been canceled across the country. And again, uh, mentioning that 80% of your supply comes from um, those donation sites. How would you encourage people, let's say um, they've never given blood before, to, to kind of look into this? You know, thanks to shows like this that are talking about that need, I think that's the first thing, because what I've experienced with the Red Cross is that people really do want to help, and it's just a matter of directing them. So the first thing I'd say, you know, donating blood is a safe process. Um, again, even in, you know, normal times, our staff is trained in infection control and safety. They use a single-use needle. In other words, it comes out of a sterile package. 
used and then it's immediately discarded. We do always change gloves between donors, wipe down surfaces. You're obviously seeing more of surface disinfecting um, because of this, but it, it really is as safe as it can be even in normal times. Um, there's a little pinch, you know, when you actually, the moment the needle goes in, it pinches a little bit, but I always tell people that for that moment, you can help save as many as three lives each time you do it. So it's, it's a trade-off. It's not to minimize the discomfort, but at the same time, you can take comfort in knowing that you're helping save lives. I know that Governor Baker and his wife uh, gave blood, and I also know that uh, the Surgeon General has really been putting out the call, Dr. Jerome Adams, for people across the country yeah. to continue to do this during the crisis as we see you know, our, our hospitals um, in need of, of so many things. Um, if somebody was a little bit reluctant, how could you make the case? I think the reason that the governor was so vocal in his support of donating blood and the Surgeon General and the FDA and Homeland Security is because we don't need another public health crisis on top of the coronavirus. You know, our, you know, everyone is being told from all directions, flatten the curve, you know, let's make sure that hospitals aren't overwhelmed. But part of that preparedness is having a healthy blood supply because there are people going to hospitals for more things than just coronavirus. You know, blood is used in surgeries, um, car accidents, trauma, uh, platelets are used um, frequently in cancer treatment. Um, more than half the platelets that the Red Cross collects go to people, um, patients in various stages of the cancer journey. You know, one of the, the things that um, we know about chemotherapy is that it wipes out your body's ability to fight off infection and to um, clot your own blood. So blood transfusions can really be life-saving in that case as well. Is there a certain um, blood type that you need more than another? Uh, right now, all types are needed. Um, generally, when they're, when we are seeing shortages, um, the first to go is usually O negative because it's the type that's most in demand. But right now, you know, we're encouraging, you don't even need to know your blood type to donate blood. So we're encouraging everybody of all blood types to come out. Um, and platelets as well, you know, Platelets are always in demand because they have a shorter shelf life. They only have a shelf life of five days. So that's always in demand as well. You talked a little bit about preparedness and, and adding another crisis on, on top of um, the coronavirus, you know, potentially. How are you, how does the Red Cross work with hospitals, with emergency management to make sure that all of this, you know, gets into place and that there's enough of a supply? The Red Cross is either the primary or secondary supplier for most hospitals in the state of Massachusetts already. We have individual contracts with hospitals that um, work on supply needs and even the hospitals where we're not their primary source of blood, they, um, in times where they're seeing a shortage or a slowdown, they're calling the Red Cross to be their backup supplier. So, and those conversations are happening internally every day. Our hospital blood bank counterparts are calling our lab and our distribution center to, you know, say what's needed and we're trying to say what we have. And it's, um, it's, really an intricate process to make sure that hospitals are supplied. In the midst of all of this, you still, as you had mentioned, you still have people calling and making appointments. It's got to give you, you know, some hope and encouragement that, you know, people want to help. We're told to social distance, but they still want to help and they're still making that call. Absolutely. And it really, you know, in my time with the Red Cross, it is the one thing that I've been able to cling to all these years is that, you know, when it comes down to it, we're being faced with an unprecedented situation, not the Red Cross as alone, but America and the world. Something like this, I'm trying to remember in the years I've been alive, something as that's similar to this. And when that happens to see people stepping up, even, you know, even when they're scared and not knowing what's going on, to see them want to come out to a blood drive, it really just, it's, it's amazing. And it's why I got into this work. And I am so lucky to be able to do this kind of work and to see that myself. I wish everyone had that same experience.